podcast, man. That Have be you the used intro. this before, Mark? Be live. Hey, we're live. Speaking of be live, we're live. All right, all right. Yeah. So according to uh, according to this new technology we're using here today called Be Live, we are live in GPS tracking installers, um, which is awesome. First things first, I want to say thank you guys for joining. Don't mind my eyeballs uh, going opposite of you at the moment. I'm just kind of logging in to make sure that we are displaying properly on the group. Yeah, man. Look at that. Awesome. So. Um, we are definitely live. First <laughs> things first, I appreciate you guys coming here today and taking some time out of your crazy busy days. I know both of you guys are are busy professionals with your own businesses and you got a lot of shit going on. And that's one of the reasons I think that you relate so well to the members of this group because most people in this group are either solopreneurs, they're, they're owners of businesses, they're managers. Um, and I relate to these guys very very well because this is how i started my career um being pretty much a road guy taking care of uh gps installations and being on the road nonstop. and you know you guys have known me for quite some time and i've had my share of struggles with with being overweight and, and getting myself severely out of shape um and it's it's really easy to do when you kind of get sucked into the bullshit of living living life on the road um you, know, you start living that hotel life uh, or in your car every day and you, know, you have to get up early and you got a 6 a.m. start at a customer's job site that's, you know, an hour and a half, two or three hour drive from your house. You're not getting up early in the morning to go to the gym unless you're, you know, pulling a David Goggins and you're getting up at 12 a.m. And, <laughs> and doing whatever the fuck's required. He's um, a different animal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let's let's get realistic here for a second. Ninety nine point nine percent of people are not going to do what David Goggins is going to do. Well, and we can sit here and say, fuck your excuses all day long. But at the end of the day, man, like that's that's a unique crowd that that can do that. So, yeah, man, of course, I'm with you. Yeah. So um, let, let's uh, give the the audience here a little bit of a background on you guys, uh, where you come from and what your specialties are and how you got involved in the fitness industry and where you are today. Sure. Mark, you want to go first? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've been a, a trainer for 17 years. I was going to be a chiropractor and in college I encountered something called organic chemistry that I had no idea what the fuck I was doing. And so that kind of derailed that whole thing. So I went the kinesiology route and uh, I own my own gym now. I'm up in Frisco, Texas, and I specialize in small group training, personal training and, and nutrition coaching and online coaching as well. So I've been doing this for a very, very long time. And, uh, it just kind of, you know, I kind of fell into the field and, and it fit and, and thankfully I still get to, you know, do something that my degree is in and I'm very passionate about it. And I, you know, I really do just enjoy helping people figure out this puzzle that is fitness and nutrition. And, and, you know, with this audience, especially, you know, there's some unique circumstances because every day is not the same. And so I'm, I'm excited and thank you for this opportunity for us to come on here and, and hopefully help some people out. Yeah, awesome. And I will say, I have been to your gym personally, and you are not nice. <laughs> <laughs> highly effective. I, is, is yeah, highly right. effective. And uh, I had trouble walking for three days. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, that can happen, man. Well, so, uh, yeah, thanks again, Thomas, for having us on, man. Um, for those of you who don't know, Mark and I are also connected uh, so our, our visions and, uh, theory, we'll call it align very closely. Um, so basically my journey is quite a bit different from Mark's. Um, I've been a registered nurse now for 17 years. I started my career in, uh, working in, in an ICU, um, pumping on some chests to some pretty young people. And so, uh, you know, that later led me to, to, to kind of take the journey of my own business, but I started, uh, I did some, uh, long-term care. I was a director of nursing in a long-term care facility for a while. And then I got into corporate wellness. And when I did get into corporate wellness is when I became a personal trainer, uh, health coach, fitness, nutrition specialist, yada, yada, yada. I do have my own uh, weight loss transformation story that I was uh, featured in men's health. I'll take it. Uh, but I did, I dropped about, uh, we'll call it 60 pounds uh, in about nine or 10 months. And, uh, you know, I just figured out a structure that worked really well for me in terms of being able to eat a lot of the foods that, you know, that we all love to eat burgers and, and have the occasional beer. 
but still be in great shape. And so now I'm in the best shape of my life and, and I turned 40 this year. Um, and like Mark, I'm extremely passionate. I walk the walk and I talk the talk as well. So any value that we can add to your group uh, is obviously while we're here. That's awesome. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah, I appreciate you guys uh, sharing a little bit of your background to you know, sure. give the the audience here, you know, a little bit of insight on, on where you are, where you come from. Uh, and both of you guys are uh, just based uh, just outside of Dallas. That's correct. Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay. And and we, I just turned forty a couple of weeks ago. Now Jason's turning forty this year. We both have kids. We both have significant others. We both mm -hmm. run a business. So we, you know, we, we definitely it. we understand the the busy. And, and trying to work around that and make, make something fit that's realistic. And sure. I'll throw this in too. Uh, whereas Mark does in-person training and online, my entire business operation is completely online. So I don't do any in-person training. Uh, my home base is working from home. Um, and I'll tell you, you know, you guys are a lot, a lot of you guys are road warriors in this group. And um, I'll tell you the, the challenges of working from home, uh, they're not equal, but, but there's a lot of, uh, structure that you have to implement as well. I mean, instilling that discipline to still, Hey, you know, I have an option whether I want to go to the gym or not. And so I get it, man. It's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you got to align your priorities, but yeah. So I just wanted to throw that in there because what Mark does and what I do are a little bit different, but you know, essentially the same. I'm really glad you touched on that because, uh, you know, most of the people in this group know me and they know my story. Um, and basically what, uh, what happened to me was I was the guy on the road for so many years. I went out there, I did the work. I was the installation technician. I worked in the vehicles. I was in, in the car 40, 50,000 miles a year. Um, you know, that puts a beating on your body in and of itself, you know, plus you go to these job sites and you're, you're, you're busting your butt, especially on some busy days. I mean, some days you're climbing ladders, working on heavy machinery and other days it's just, you, know, you guys know what the heat is like in Texas. I mean, it gets hot up here in the Northeast too, especially oh, yeah. this time of year. Um, and that right there, believe it or not, the physicality of the work, even though, you know, we're not, uh, you know, swinging sledgehammers all day, the physicality, the moving around uh, was, I wouldn't say it was, it was healthy, but it, it was enough exercise to keep my weight at a sustained level. Gotcha. Okay. And what happened was when my business started to expand and I moved into that home office role, that's when the problem started. Sure. So I didn't change any of my eating habits, any of my alcohol intake habits and exercise. What the fuck was that? Like didn't exist. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I didn't realize it, you know, month one, month two, month three, but go back two, three years. It's like, Oh, what the fuck happened to me? You know? And um, I knew it was a problem. <laughs> I got a picture I put on Facebook uh, a while back uh, of me, February 20, January, February of 2018. I was uh, about 291, 92 pounds, roughly. Uh, and, you know, you guys, you guys know me. I'm, I'm a tall guy. I'm six foot four. 291 is, is like no good for me. You know, <laughs> a good weight for me, I'd say, and you, you might disagree, is right around the 250, 255 mark. I'm a ways off from there now, but the whole reason I'm saying this is I got to a realization that I was uncomfortable in my own skin and I knew it was a major problem when um, I couldn't bend down and tie my shoelaces without getting out of breath. Yep. I said, Whoa, wait a second. Like, and just like you guys, I'm turning 40 in, in October. So we're all right, right around the same age, you know, sure. Uh, kids, wives, you know, all that kind of shit. And I said to myself, like this, this isn't cool. You know, um, I don't know about you, but do you know any old fat guys? I don't. <laughs> I've said that before. Yeah. I mean, you look at an aging population and the majority of people you see that are 80 and above, they're small people. They're, they're, there's no obese people past that age. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to scare you, but there are quite a few old people at that age in nursing homes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and, and that just to your point, I mean, yeah, if you're going to be you know, still independent and, and able to care for yourself or do most of the things that you with for yourself as you get older, uh, you know, being 300 plus pounds is not going to is not going to be a recipe for success for you, for sure. Sure. So. And Thomas, you know, the, uh, the observation about tying your shoes, you know, in in the fitness realm, it gets it's fun to, to have the abs and be cut and all that stuff. And, you know, like Jason's all ripped and he posts pictures of himself sometimes. And, 
Thankfully, he's not one of those Instagram whores, but, but I am not. <laughs> but, but really, the functionality is what it's about. And, you know, I've always said, like, my philosophy on fitness is simple. What we do in the gym should make what you do out of the gym easier. So, you know, and, and I'm just using the gym as the metaphor, but, you know, whether it's working out at home, what you feed your body, like all those things are in, intended to make life a little bit easier for you. So getting in and out of the car is not a chore. Bending over to tie your shoes is not a chore. If you got to climb on a roof from time to time or every day, it's not a chore. Like, it's mm-hmm. just what you do. And I think people lose sight of that sometimes and think that it's this, this big thing that, you know, I got to do all these things in order to be in shape. Where in reality, when we're talking about a healthy functional level, sometimes it's just a few minor tweaks here and there that can make a huge difference, especially when done consistently over time. Yeah, totally. You know, and, and to your point, man, I agree with you 100%. And obviously, as I mentioned in the beginning, our, our visions and, and views align a lot. And so... I firmly believe most people just want to feel good, right? And, and so in order to feel good, uh, that doesn't equal, you know, Instagram model. And, and we can sit here all day and talk about abs and six packs. And I will tell you, I mean, yeah, I do have a six pack, but I'll tell you the reason that I go to the gym and, and to your point, it doesn't have to be gym, it could be home workouts. The reason I go and work out is not for the abs, is not for the, the rip physique. It's for mental clarity, number mm-hmm. one. And number two, to, to have that constant pride in my fitness, right? Like I'm not there to, uh, to, to post pictures. The reason I post pictures is to show you, you know, I'm fully transparent. I'm showing you all of my meals. I show you all the beer that I drink on the weekends. And I also show you a six pack so it can be done. And that's Mm -hmm. why I do that. But at the end of the day, we don't, you know, we live in an immediate gratification society as, as most people know. And so with fast food on every uh, corner. We have these thousand dollar computers in our hands that we can Google any, any uh, question and get the answer immediately. And so far too often what I see is people will wait and, and procrastinate with their health so long that it becomes an overwhelming process and such an uphill battle that it's almost overwhelming to think about. And so when you go on to Instagram or so any social and you see these guys flashing the abs and all this, you know, if you're somebody who's struggling with your health and that's what you're looking at as inspiration, it's just not reality. Like most people, that is a, that is a lifestyle that most people cannot live. Um, and so it, it, we often hear that self comparison is the biggest thief of joy. You got to get away from that mentality and start to buy into the process. And, and Mark and I, uh, Thomas, I'll just tell you, Mark and I recorded, uh, we just did a, a podcast interview for my podcast, mm-hmm. um, this uh, earlier or well, last week. Yeah. Friday. And a lot of this same stuff came up, but I think that, you know, what, what we have to realize here is the, is the fact that you must embrace the struggle because you know, as well as we do, you know, living the overweight life is a hard life to live. Mm -hmm. Living the fit life is also a very hard life to live. There's no easy life. And when you think about the grand scheme of things, you've got to realize that if you want longevity and you want, you know, you, you know, that health is wealth. And you've got to choose your hard wisely because both, both lives are hard. Bending over to tie your shoe and being out of breath is hard. Yep. Going to the gym three, four, five times a week and eating you know, multiple salads throughout the week because you know it's the right thing to do for your body is also hard. Mm-hmm. So choose your hard wisely. Yeah, I agree. I agree totally on that. You, know, um, you, you touched on mental clarity. And I want to see one, one of the – I was really active when I was younger. So let's backtrack a second. So you know, I spent my – my, you know, youth and teen years, very active playing sports, uh, baseball, football. Um, and, you know, as I started getting out of my teens, and early 20s, I spent a good amount of time in the gym. And then, you know, like most people got too busy and lazy and found a girlfriend and said, well, fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, here we are 40 years old and it's like, all right, well, here's a disaster. Now let's start to clean it. Um, and, one of the biggest things that I noticed very quickly was that my mental clarity was way better once I started going back to the gym. And I, I didn't start a ridiculous, crazy workout schedule. I'm talking like three days a week, Monday, sure. Wednesday, Friday. And I would go for about a half hour, maybe 40 minutes, nothing crazy. And um, it put a beating on my body. Like 
I, I was physically exhausted after the gym um, to the point where I would find myself going to bed crazy early in order to kind of recoup from this extra physical effort that I put in. After a couple of months of consistency, that did change. And in that time, I also realized that I wasn't as cranky. I wasn't as short with my wife. I wasn't as short with my kids. And I also, I wasn't as short with my business partner, who I call my work wife. So him and I were clashing heads for months and months and months before about just stupid bullshit. And I went, I put a little effort into the, into the exercise realm of my life. And all of a sudden, all of this shit that once was very minor that bothered me now just kind of rolled off. I'm like, all right, man, whatever. We'll kind of get it done. And it just made such a difference. So you're telling me that your commitment to fitness significantly improved your work, your work wife and your uh, relationship, basically. Yep. Just yep. that one, that one switch, just you, you buying into the process and essentially embracing the struggle because you, like you said, it wasn't easy mm -hmm. and it was beating you up, but that one commitment for let's call it an hour and a half a week, uh, significantly in, improved your, your relationship. And then that's just one example you're giving yeah. us that, uh, that filled your life with positivity by committing to that. But, but I like that. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I agree. And, and what's, what's great too, is that, as you said, it wasn't this like, I'm going to go do two a days every day. You know, it was just a few times a week, but, but you worked when you went, you made it worthwhile. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I think I always find that, you know, working out lends perspective. And if you're really pushing yourself hard, like in those moments when you're working out, that's all you think about. Every other problem that you have goes away. You know, yeah. if you're sprinting on a treadmill or you're under the bar or whatever, and it's hard, your sole focus is on that. And so I think over time, it starts to lend perspective that, you know, some of the things that, that annoy us or that bother us or that we let get to us, we start to release those things because we realize it's not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. Like there's bigger problems than that. And why am I focusing on all this little shit when the big stuff is what I need to be focusing on and where I can actually make progress and solve issues. And, and, you know, I don't, that's not something you can tell anybody. They have to experience that. Yeah. And, you know, I just, I, I just talked about a little while ago in a, you know, in another group, I'm sure you guys saw it, of, you know, how you do, how you do anything is how you do everything. And mm -hmm. so you start putting forth that effort in the gym and it translates into every other area of your life, whether it's, you know, your, your relationships at work, your relationship at home, your nutrition, just the way you, you view yourself, your self-esteem, like it translates into everything. And so, yeah. you know, it's a great catalyst to make that happen. You yeah, know, to your point, I think that, and, and again, you know, we, we, we live in a, a society where the trend is waiting. The, the trend is procrastination. And, and I'll just speak to my company's name, Dad Bod Health. I mean, we have, we live in a society where it's a softening society. You know, we, and I'm all about self-love, like, don't get me wrong. And, and <laughs> I, I think that we should love ourselves for who we are, but as people, we need to raise our standards. The obesity trend is not going away. And so it, it is up to the individual to raise your standards. And when we see this trend continuing, it's very easy to look around and say, well, you know what, my, my, my four or five buddies that I see most are all overweight. So I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to put it off as well. And then, you know, you're basically up shit creek without a paddle before you know it. And, and so mm -hmm. most people don't realize how well they're or how good their body is designed to feel. And if you've waited and you're overweight or you're struggling with your health and you haven't bought into the process, it's very difficult to actually see that. But like Mark said, once you experience this, and this is not a drastic overhaul of health, health habits. This could be adding in a few days of, of walking per week. This could be ditching the soda and increasing your water intake. This could be making a conscious effort to get a little bit more vegetables in your life. You know, there's so many things, making a, a, setting a strict sleep schedule, getting to bed so that the rest of your day has a much greater outlook. You know, if you're somebody that's staying up till two in the morning and you're trying to float by on five hours and, and you're running on fumes, that's not going to cut it long term. You know, one of the biggest reasons people have a hard time losing weight is because of stress, high level stress. 
And if your cortisol levels are super high because A, you're not getting enough sleep or B, you're not managing your stress well with, with fitness, with meditation, whatever that looks like for you, it's going to be very challenging for you to lose weight. And so we, we always get dialed in on diet and exercise, diet mm-hmm. and exercise. But there's, there's, there's much greater depth to our health than just those two things. And that's one thing I don't think we can lose sight on. But again, I, I think that most people don't realize how good their body is designed to feel. And once you experience it, you gain a little bit of momentum and then you get confident. You start to, you start to feel better. Then you start to look better. And when that confidence starts to come in, like you've experienced, Thomas, I, I believe a confident man with a plan basically becomes an unstoppable force, you know? Sure. And so, and so that's where we've got to get, but, but we've lowered our standards, standards as a society. And, and because we've done that, it's more and more accepting uh, to just say, well, the dad bod's in right now. It's the cool thing to do. So I'm just going to rock it instead of saying, well, you know what? I need to raise my fucking standards because I'm better than this. I want to become the most elite version of myself. And that doesn't include, you know, walking around being overweight and not at least addressing it to work towards a healthier version of you. Sure. That's, that's really awesome. You you hit on some real key points there and I agree with it. So now let's get to some of the, the, the nuts and bolts of this. What the fuck do you need to do in order to make this happen? Especially (laughs) if you're a guy living on the road 90% of the time, you know, and in your car driving 50,000 miles a year. Sure. Mark, you can, you can chime in if you want first. Yeah. So I think, you know, number one, a decision has to be made. Mm. And I mean, just like everything else in life, like if, if somebody wants to improve their health and fitness and this is their lifestyle right now, they have to make a decision that they're going to change. And that change is going to require different actions and different behaviors in order to make the change a reality. And you know, so I, I always look at these situations as we've got to find the low hanging fruit because if people can get a, a quick win and feel like they're making progress, then that's motivation to keep moving forward and keep making more progress. So, you know, let's just use an example. You know, I, I've, I've seen some of the chatter in the, in the group, you know, so somebody wakes up at 6 a.m. and they're, they're literally on the road 6 a.m. And, and maybe they're getting home at 7 o'clock at night. You know, Mm -hmm. so it's a long day, nonstop. Okay, so what can that person do? So, you know, obviously, as Jason pointed out earlier, sleep's a huge thing. And and I would really start there, honestly, you know, before you even address working out or nutrition or anything else, just are you getting eight hours of sleep per night? And if you're not, how do we make that happen? So that's number one. And, And again, that comes down to making a choice and having discipline. And I've talked about it before, like I struggle big time with getting enough sleep because I start my day so early, mm-hmm. but then I want to stay up at night and, and play and do whatever the hell I do. Um, so that would be number one. And then, you know, on the nutrition standpoint, it's what's one thing you can do today that's better than yesterday. Mm-hmm. So instead of going, oh shit, okay, I got to go on a diet and I can't eat carbs. You know, that's bullshit. Like, Can you drink more water? Do you drink any water at all? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure some of these guys live off of energy drinks, which I get the caffeine thing, but at some point you need some water in your system too. So maybe the first week or two, you just focus on drinking more water just and get that habit established and then move on to the next thing. Because, you know, we talked about a little bit before, like people get overwhelmed because they try to overhaul everything all at the same time. Yeah. And, you know, seven days in, you're like, fuck it, this is ridiculous. Like, I don't Mm -hmm. want to do all this stuff instead of going, oh, well, yeah, I mean, I could drink two or three extra glasses of water per day. Okay, I can do that. And you do that for a couple of weeks and then all of a sudden it's habit and you feel a little bit better. You're like, okay, now maybe I'll eat some vegetables because I never eat vegetables at all. Okay, so, you know, have a carrot and a piece of broccoli every now and then, you know. But just finding those little wins to get some momentum going, and then you can worry about all these other like details. Because again, as I stated before, most people aren't aren't they're not as far away as they think. They're just not consistent with implementing these things on a regular basis. I agree, and I, I like what you said there. And I'll, I'll I'll rephrase it a little bit. And it's it's a terminology that I know you guys are familiar with. I don't know if everyone here watching is, and it's micro commitments. <laughs> You know, Absolutely. so it's like you make this micro pr- commitment to do whatever that's going to better you. And this, this this doesn't just apply to health and fitness. No. Everyone who's watching. I mean, this is this is everything. <laughs> this is your relationship with your loved ones, your family, your wife, your husband, significant other, whatever. 
This is, you know, your your business. This is, you know, your your skill set, your trade, whatever it is you do as, as you know, for, for work, whether you're a technician, a doctor, a lawyer, whatever. This is, you know, micro commitments to get better every day. A small step forward every day. You turn around three months from now and look back at where you were. You're going to say, holy shit. Yeah, and, and I love that, man. And you're 100% right. And I'll just tell you, you know, Mark, you mentioned, uh, Thomas, you mentioned micro commitments and Mark mentioned momentum. And those things go hand in hand. And what happens, what I see a lot of is that it's very easy to discredit the micro commitment because you don't think that it's actually doing something. You don't think that it's actually making a difference because you don't get that immediate gratification. And then people don't buy into the process long enough. So I'll give you an example. You know, you, you have a guy that says, you know what, I'm going to start exercising. And he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to commit to three walks a week for 15 minutes, right? That's 45 minutes of exercise you weren't getting before. Mm-hmm. And he does it for two weeks and he doesn't lose a pound. But he's so focused on the number of the scale that he doesn't realize the value that he's providing to the inside of his body, which actually trumps what's going on on the outside. OK, your, your cardiovascular health, your gut health, all those things that make up the big picture from the inside. You're starting to implement these things that are that are contributing to good health from the inside out. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to realize that two weeks of a commitment on any of these things that Mark mentioned. You know, you, you talk about the water intake. We talk about fitness. We talk about getting more vegetables in. Um, these don't have to be drastic overhauls. But if you two, you do any of those things for two weeks you're going to start to feel better. And when you start making healthy changes and you gain momentum, after four weeks, you're going to start to see results. And then after eight weeks, other people start to take notice. Mm. And so if you don't buy into this for the long, this is about playing the long game, okay? If you, and and you, you guys mentioned the word diet. I hate the word diet because it has an expiration date. Mm. Don't ever think about the fact that you're going on a diet or you're going to be dieting. Your diet is your healthy choices. And so what you've got to get into the habit of doing is starting to incorporate more nutrient-dense foods into your life and starting to eliminate some of the junk from your life. This is not a diet. These are you working towards becoming not only the healthiest version of yourself, but also the highest energy level of you, that, you, that you're capable of. I will tell you, when I get out of bed every morning, I'm so dialed in with my health habits during the week that I wake up most days before my alarm, ready to take on the day with soaring energy. Mm -hmm. And I attribute that to my gym habits, my sleep schedule, my nutrition habits, and all these things that go into that. But I think in order to get started, and that's what we we need here is actionable steps, you must discover your why. And it's not about, you know, you mentioned your weight loss, Thomas. It's not about I want to lose weight. You know, it's got to be much deeper than that. Because if it's not deeper than I want to look, I want to look better without my shirt on, or I want to, I want to lose weight just to look better in general. Most likely, you're not going to continue your consistency with your health habits. But when your why goes down to, I want to be around to watch my kids grow up to pursue greatness, or I want to be around so that I can build my fortune, my nest egg, so that I can travel the world with my wife or significant other later down the road. That's what you're working towards. And so if your why is not powerful enough, if your why is not deep enough, it's going to be very hard for you, continue the, for you to continue the consistency. For me, I'm the only living male from my mom's side of the family, literally. I don't know another male alive. And so for me, the odds are already stacked against me, but I know that I want to be around long term for my son and for my wife so that we can grow old together. And so my why is pretty deep. But if you don't have a strong enough why, man, it's just very hard for you to, to start something and really buy into the process. So that that's step one is discovering your why. Yeah, I agree. It's super important to know, um, to dig in deep there. And it's not an easy thing to discover and figure out either. If anyone's watching this and they want a good book on it, go read Start, start With Why by Simon Sinek. Um, killer book. Uh, if you guys haven't read it, then go and do so yourself. Even the auto audio book version of it's just amazing. I've, I've gone through it about five or six times at this point. Nice. So definitely some cool shit in there. Yeah. It, it digs in real deep and you know why it's important to lead with your why as well, especially sure. in a business sense. So, uh, so um, 
you know, let, let's let's say you got, you know, uh, Joe Blow, who's uh, an over the road installation technician. He spends a lot of time in hotels and his company puts him strategically in a hotel that gives him, you know, the bullshit continental breakfast every morning. <laughs> you know, how is this guy going to what, what is he doing to get the most out of whatever the fuck they're serving him at, at you know, the fake egg and fake pancake breakfast? Yep. I think number one, being mindful of consumption in general, like the literal quantity of how much we're eating. You know, one thing with, uh, with my nutrition coaching program, one of the first habits we discuss is portion size mm. and just getting somebody to eat a little bit less. Like if weight loss is the goal, just eat a little bit less. So when given a shitty selection, just don't fill up your plate as much. And I know it sounds stupid and, and like rudimentary, but I mean, the reason people are overweight is because we eat too much damn food. So, you know, getting a visual of what does a portion actually look like and working with what you have. And if that's what they're going to eat, that's fine. You know, we all know those powdered eggs suck and whatever, but, you know, ugh. but, you know, don't, don't have the powdered eggs and then, you know, a bagel and a muffin and a coffee with a shit ton of sugar in it and, and another muffin for the road. You know, mm -hmm. there's usually some fruit there somewhere. Grab some fruit. And, and honestly, like my, my fiance travels quite a bit for some of her work and she doesn't eat beef, pork, or chicken. So when food is catered in, a lot of times she can't even eat it anyway because mm -hmm. they're always bringing in stuff that, you know, doesn't fit. So she goes and finds a grocery store and buys shit that she can buy and eats that, you know? So again, a lot of this comes down to priorities. There's usually a gas station close by, may not be the greatest, but is it better than the alternative? And that's what you have to look at. And I think a lot of these guys need to understand that we're not looking for perfection. You're just looking for a little bit better. So if you can pack some lunch meat, if you can find a hard boiled egg somewhere instead of powdered eggs, mm -hmm. if you can, you know what, like the sandwich at racetrack may not be the greatest thing in the world, but it's probably better than the burger from McDonald's. And so, you know, looking at the bigger picture of things and again, just making a little bit of better choice every single time. It adds up to a lot. And, you know, I definitely recommend, if possible, getting a small lunch bag slash cooler. You know, those things are great. Usually hotels got ice, so you can get ice somewhere. You know, if you don't have a mini fridge, there's things, you know, you can get those tuna packets that are already seasoned that you don't have to mix anything with. Those are great. Um, you know, there's always fruits and nuts. And, you know, there's ways to do this without it being this giant production. And, and I know you posted the link to that infographic. It's got a bunch of great stuff in there, mm -hmm. you know, of like basically a continuum of, you know, here's the best thing, here's the worst thing, and here's all your choices in the middle. And, you know, I, I truly believe if someone, if it's important, someone will figure out a way to do it. Mm. And there was a story, um, that I remember from Men's Health, this guy, he's a trucker, like, I don't know, a hundred thousand miles a year. Is that, is that like possible? Yeah. Well, I, yeah. Yeah. I'd yeah. say easily. Yeah. So what he did, he owned, he owned his own big rig, but he was always on the road mm -hmm. and he actually outfitted his truck to where he could get barbells and plates in there. <laughs> and so he'd pull up to a truck stop. He'd take his weights out. He'd do a 20, 30 minute workout. He'd go in and shower, you know, at the big truck stops, but Mm -hmm. He was dedicated to it because he was tired of being a fat slob. And, mm -hmm. you know, within a year or so, like he was ripped. Yeah. But all those things, you know, picking fruit instead of a muffin, you know, you know, picking up lunch meat when possible, like just all those little choices instead of the junk food that's quick and easy, just making a few simple changes. He made a humongous, <clears throat> you know, turnaround in his life because of it. Sure. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah. You know, you mentioned the powdered eggs and, and these situations. So I think, and, and to Mark's point, what we have to do is there's going to be situations where you have to try to make the most of what you've got to work with. But there's also scenarios where it's going to be on your shoulders to think outside the box, like Mark said, and, and get creative with this. Okay. You're obviously not going to have the same selection at a hotel that you are a grocery store. So if the grocery store is an option, by all means, go into the grocery store, shop the perimeter of the grocery store and find some healthier alternatives. What I will tell you, and, and one thing that, you know, just a general rule of thumb is 
if I'm, if I'm at a hotel and those are my options, the powdered eggs, fruit, whatever, I'm, I'm getting powdered eggs, maybe a little bit of bacon or sausage and some fruit and skipping all the carbs. Like mm-hmm. the worst thing that you can do in the morning is eat a bunch of carbs, muffins, donuts, all that nonsense. None of that is going to serve you. And so if you, if you can focus on sticking to more of the protein sources and then any fruit and vegetables that you have available to you, the sky becomes the limit in terms of what you can do with your, your nutrition. Because at the end of the day, the, the thing that I think gets most people in trouble is are, are these sugary processed carbohydrate sources that are everywhere. Yeah. And so when you're focusing in, and, and Mark mentioned nuts, I'm going to tell you right now, most people don't eat enough healthy fats. And I feel like one of the reasons that I'm, I'm as lean as I am is because of the amount of healthy fats that I eat. I do not think that you can go wrong getting some almonds, getting some walnuts, getting some pecans, pistachios, whatever that mm-hmm. looks like for you to have, an, have some options and then pack a cooler with you. Like if you're somebody that's on the road all day long, it is going to serve you 10,000 times better to pack a cooler. Do a, And this is, doesn't even mean meal prep. This just means a little bit of planning ahead of time. So Throw a couple pieces of fruit in there. Throw some hard-boiled eggs in there. Throw some back, some already prepackaged nuts that, like Mark likes. Mark says with the portions, one quarter cup of nuts is damn near 200 calories, depending on what nut it is. Mm-hmm. And so you can't sit there and eat the whole bag of nuts and think, well, I'm eating healthy because I'm eating yeah. nuts, and then you're a thousand <laughs> calories deep into the nuts. Mm-hmm. So if you have these little, and and this this stuff that I'm naming takes five minutes to to put together the evening. Yeah, there's, there's no cooler. there's no prep behind it at all. I mean, right. for Christ's sake, you can go on Amazon and order the fucking nuts right. and leave your house. <laughs> yeah, and, and these are, so this is all really grab and go options that will significantly serve you much better than having to go through a drive through, um, you know, or, or being or relying on on food sources that you know aren't going to serve you at all. And so I, I think a lot of it comes down to getting a little bit creative, um, mm. being more informed about what healthy options are. Most people know what healthy food is, but, but doing a little research, figuring out where you need to be in terms of calories, because that's going to be a huge thing for you moving forward. Even if you're not working out at all, you kind of need to know where you need to be with calories. Um, but man, thinking outside the box and getting creative, because if you've been in this routine for so long and you feel like you're stuck in a rut, well, you're not going to get anywhere and you're not going to create change by doing the same damn things you're doing for the last six months, the last six years, Mm -hmm. right? So you've got to start to break away from some of those habits. And in the beginning, it's going to be uncomfortable because you're not used to it. But, you know, like Ed Milet says, become comfortable with being uncomfortable. When you get to that point and you're always, you're always looking for ways to improve. It's just a, it's just a different mentality. Yeah. So I think he, one, one other thing I wanted to mention too, as far as the nutrition thing goes is buy a shaker bottle mm, with the yes. little metal ball in it and take protein with you. I mean, that yeah. is possibly the simplest thing anyone could do. You know, you can get a tub of protein anywhere. Mm-hmm. You can travel with it and all you need some water at some point, you yep. know? So, so, you know, middle of the day, hunger strikes, you need something that that's the easiest way to get a couple hundred good calories in like mm-hmm. quality calories and, you know, it doesn't take any time at all to, to make that happen. And it's super simple and cost effective, too. Yeah, well, and I'll tell you, man, one of my go to's on the weekend, like if I'm out doing yard work or I'm working on the pool or we're running errands, it's slam a protein shake and grab a, ha- grab a handful of pistachios. And now you've technically got a balanced meal. You've got some protein, a little bit of carbs and a lot of healthy fat. And now you're you're 300 or 350 calories in. Mm-hmm. But now. The protein and the healthy fat keep you full for a while. Now you can go another three hours without actually having to physically sit down and eat a long, drawn-out meal. Mm-hmm. That is a meal. And so don't always think that your, your next meal has to be you know, a long, drawn-out process. It could be a protein shake and a handful of almonds to get the job done for three, four hours before you need to eat again. Yeah, and I also find that uh, I'm a big fan of the protein shakes. Ha, um, ha, ha. No one laughed at my joke. Um, <laughs> I also find that uh, you know if you up your water intake along with you know uh, a, you know the protein shake route, you're you're definitely pretty full during the day, and you don't even want to eat. And right. especially you know you guys know this again going back to the hot weather being this time of the year. I remember being in the field this time of the year, 
and physically not wanting to even look at food because I was so like felt just so gross. I couldn't eat. So I was like, just slam water all day, man. Yeah. And you know, you, you just, it, it lowered the urge to want to eat. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you guys, um, sorry to cut you off there, Mark, you, you, Jason, you touched on something before that I, I don't want to skip over. Cause I think it's important. You started talking about calories and okay. as we all know here as business owners, everything goes, revolves around math. You got to know your numbers if you want to succeed in any place, right? Whether that's sure. finances, whether it's, you know, whatever. So how does someone figure out what their caloric intake should be for a day? Is there a formula to it? Is it yeah. is quick and simple? Yeah, we can. Uh, I After this, uh, I'll try to get in there and post a link. Um, there's a, a scale or a, uh, a little link that I use. Uh, I think it's on healthline.com, but I'll post it in here after mm -hmm. this so, so anybody can use it. I put it in all of my, my uh, fitness groups that I have. So basically you just click on the link and you're, it's only, it's just going to ask you for your, your height and your weight and then your activity level. So be mm -hmm. honest with yourself. If you're somebody that's not exercising at all right now, don't put down that you do moderate intensity exercise three days a week. If you're honest with yourself in terms of the, uh, the activity level, it will tell you how many calories you need to sustain your current weight, how many calories you need to gain weight, and then how, how many calories you need to lose weight, and even how many calories you need to lose weight quickly. So what you have to think is there's 3,500 calories in one pound. If you wanted to lose one pound per week, you need to be in a 500 calorie deficit every day of the week to lose one pound per week. Mm. And so when you start to break it down, there's no, there's no other factor that comes into weight loss other than calories in, calories out. Now, I will tell you that not all calories are created equal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if you have 500 calories from McDonald's and then 500 calories that came from a protein shake, a handful of berries, and a handful of pistachios, obviously the 500 calories from the clean whole foods uh, are, are going to be utilized a lot easier by your body. And so there is some difference there. But, but the bottom line is calories in, calories out. And so I'll post that link, like I said. But once you figure out where you need to be, again, it doesn't need to be a drastic decrease in calories. If you're, if you're like, I want to lose weight, but I don't want to starve, well, cut back a couple hundred calories a day and just, just play the long game. And you will see your weight start to trickle down. I mean, that's the bottom line. So. Yep. Yeah, and I always look at, at nutrition in two-week experiments. So once somebody, you know, those, those numbers are, they're, they're as accurate as they can be for a formula online. So, you know, you, you pick a number, you start with that amount, and do that for two weeks. You know, give your body a chance to adjust. If you see what you're wanting to see, if you see the weight loss you, you want to see, then you keep doing it. If it's stalled out or nothing happened, then you drop it down a little bit more. But, you know, give yourself a little bit of time to let your body adjust. Like our bodies are so resistant to change, both good and bad. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, the ripped friend that you have is always ripped because it would take monumental changes in their behavior the opposite way for them to get overweight. And then, you know, vice versa. That's why it seems really hard for really overweight people to lose weight because our bodies just want to remain the way they are. And so at some point, if you institute those healthy habits consistently, your body goes, oh, like this is what we're doing now. So, and know. I really like it. <laughs> and this yeah. is good. So we can yeah. let it go. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Guys, um, you gave us a ton of information here today. And I think you broke a lot of it down into simple terms that uh, people can really easily understand, uh, myself included. So, um, you know, in respect to everyone's time here, I don't want to hold you guys up too much longer. Uh, what's what's the best way if anyone is interested in talking to you guys further? Uh, what's the best way for people here to contact you and maybe get some more information out of your head, or maybe do a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with you to, to say, hey, you know, this is the problems that I'm having. What do you suggest? And kind of give more of a personalized uh, action plan to them. Yeah. So really, I mean, the the easiest thing we can do right now is the link that we gave you. I know you mm -hmm. posted it earlier. Yeah. If somebody wants more information, you know, we're giving out a complimentary 30 minute strategy session, coaching call, whatever you want to call it. That's going to be digging into them specifically. So are you going to get pitched? Yeah, maybe. But, <laughs> you know, we're going to talk about some specifics. 
and, you know, get a snapshot of somebody's situation and see what we can do to help give them some action steps immediately Mm -hmm. and not like, well, you know, if you did no, no, like, what can you do again? Like I said, what can you do tomorrow? What can you do today to start moving forward? Yep. So, you know, if anybody, if, if anybody wants to take us up on that, you know, we're more than happy to do that. All they got to do is just fill out their information on that page. And then, you know, sometime this week, we'll, we'll get in touch with people and, and start setting up calls. Yeah, that's awesome. So what, one thing I want to post out to you, uh, you know, I mentioned to you as well. The first time that I worked out with you uh, was in a parking lot with about 50 other people. And there was not <laughs> one single piece of exercise equipment in the entire vicinity. That is and, correct. And you you murdered people. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of people think it's like, oh, you know, I need all this fancy, you know, weightlifting equipment and, you know, all this aerobic and cardio shit. Like, no, Mark proved to me that you don't need any of that. So I'm sure you've got some tricks up your sleeve, you know, to the guy who's who goes into a hotel four or five nights yes. a week. Um, and, you know, a lot of the hotels these guys are going to, there, there is no, uh, you know, in-house gym. And, and from my own personal experience, most times when there is a gym, you might as well just stay in your goddamn room and do push-ups and sit-ups <laughs> because the gym is so off. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. I'll tell you, Thomas, so, it's funny. Uh, you, awesome. You know, I'll just say All right, guys. Um, oh. Oh. Let's, uh, let's sign off here. I'm going to drop that link again or that form you gave me into the comments. And I'm, a bunch of comments came through. I know the software that we're using today, we couldn't see any of them. And I, knowing you guys, I'm sure you're going to go in there and answer any questions people might have had um, sure. regarding this call. I really appreciate your time and uh, grateful for, for you guys, you know, being within, within my group, my network um, here and in other areas that, uh, and how we've, we've, you know, been introduced to each other and how we know each other and um, appreciate your help today. Hey, you got it, brother. Anytime, man. We appreciate the, uh, the invite and, and hopefully, hopefully some people got some good out of it and we'll, uh, we'll keep plugging away. Awesome. Have a great day. Hey, thanks, thanks man. You too, man. Bye.